Hey there, I'm Sarah. Before I dive into my story, please take a moment to like and subscribe to Vivid Tales. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming. I'm a 35-year-old elementary school teacher, living what I thought was the dream with my husband Mark and our amazing 10-year-old daughter Emily. We've got this cozy little place in the suburbs, and for the past 12 years, Mark and I have been building this warm, loving home for our girl. Now, everything would be perfect if it weren't for one tiny problem. My mother-in-law, Barbara. Let me tell you, that woman is a piece of work. She's 60, but acts like she's the Queen of England or something. Always poking her nose into our business, criticizing how I raise Emily or keep the house. It's like nothing I do is ever good enough for her. Sarah, dear, don't you think Emily's room could use a good tidying? She'd say. Or, oh, is that what you're serving for dinner? How interesting. I swear, sometimes I just want to... But no, I keep my cool. For Mark's sake, and for Emily's. Family harmony and all that jazz, right? Anyway, the other day, Emily comes bouncing into the kitchen, all excited about this cooking show she'd been watching. Mom, Mom, can I try making pasta like they did on TV? How could I say no to that face? Besides, I figure it's a great way for her to learn some life skills and boost her confidence. So we start small. Scrambled eggs, then pancakes. Before I know it, she's flipping omelets like a pro. Then Mark's birthday rolls around, and Emily hits me with this idea. Can I cook dinner for Daddy's birthday? Please, please, please. I'm touched, you know? My little girl, wanting to do something so sweet for her dad. But then, Emily drops the bomb. And can we invite Grandma too? I almost choke on my coffee. Barbara? At a dinner cooked by a ten-year-old? I can already hear her comments, but Emily's looking at me with those big, hopeful eyes, and I cave. Sure, sweetie. We'll invite Grandma, and I'll help you plan the perfect menu, okay? As we start brainstorming ideas, I can't shake this feeling in the pit of my stomach. Barbara at our table, judging every bite, every decoration. But hey, it's for Emily, right? And Mark. I can handle one dinner with the dragon lady. The big day finally arrived. Mark's birthday. I woke up early, feeling a mix of excitement and anxiety. Emily was already bouncing off the walls, eager to start cooking. Come on, Mom. We gotta make everything perfect for Dad. I couldn't help but smile at her enthusiasm. We spent hours in the kitchen, flour dusting our noses, tomato sauce splattering our aprons. Emily insisted on making everything from scratch. The pasta, the meatballs, even the garlic bread. Do you think Grandma will like it? She asked her eyes wide with hope. I swallowed hard. I'm sure she'll appreciate all your hard work, sweetie. As evening rolled around, Mark came home, and Barbara arrived shortly after. Emily was practically vibrating with excitement as she brought out her creations. Happy birthday, Dad. I made everything myself. Well, with Mom's help. Mark's face lit up. Wow, princess. This looks amazing. I held my breath as Barbara took her first bite. For a moment, there was silence. Then... Well, I must say, this spaghetti is terribly overcooked. And these meatballs? Bland as cardboard? The room went cold. Emily's smile faltered. Barbara, I started, trying to keep my voice level. Emily worked very hard on this meal. She scoffed. And you let her waste all these ingredients? Look at the state of the kitchen. Sarah, really, I expected better from you. Emily's lower lip trembled. Before I could react, she burst into tears and ran from the room. Emily, I called, jumping up to follow her. Behind me, I could hear Mark trying to calm his mother. Mom, that was completely uncalled for. I'm just being honest, Mark. The child needs to learn to take criticism. I found Emily curled up on her bed, sobbing into her pillow. My heart shattered. Oh, sweetheart, I murmured, pulling her into my arms. Grandma was way out of line. Your dinner was wonderful. But she hated it, Emily wailed. I just wanted to make something nice for Dad. And you did, baby. Dad loved it. I loved it. Grandma. Well, Grandma has her own issues. Back in the dining room, Barbara's voice was getting louder. I will not apologize for speaking the truth. If you coddle her like this, she'll never learn. I'd had enough. Leaving Emily with a kiss on her forehead, I stormed back to confront Barbara. That's it, I snapped. I've put up with your criticism of me for years, but I draw the line at hurting my daughter. Barbara looked shocked. Well, I never... No. 
You never do think about anyone but yourself, do you? Emily is ten years old. She poured her heart into this meal and you crushed her. Mark stepped in. Mom, I think it's best if you leave. Barbara's face turned an ugly shade of red. Fine. If this is the thanks I get for trying to help, I'll go. She stormed out, slamming the door behind her. The silence that followed was deafening. Mark turned to me, his face a mix of anger and sorrow. Sarah, I'm so sorry. I had no idea she'd react like that. I sighed, suddenly feeling exhausted. It's not your fault, Mark, but we need to talk about this. Your mother can't keep treating us, treating Emily, like this. He nodded, running a hand through his hair. You're right, this can't go on. As we stood there, the remnants of Emily's lovingly prepared meal growing cold on the table, I knew something had to change. This wasn't just about a ruined dinner anymore. It was about protecting our daughter, our family, from Barbara's toxic behavior. And in that moment, I made a decision. This would be the last time Barbara ever hurt my little girl. The days after Barbara's outburst were tough. My sweet, bubbly Emily became a shadow of herself. No more cheerful chatter about new recipes or begging to help with dinner. It broke my heart. One night, after tucking Emily in, I found Mark in the kitchen, staring at the untouched cookbook Emily used to love. We need to talk about your mother, I said. Mark sighed. I know, what she did. It's unacceptable. I've never seen Emily so crushed. This can't go on, Mark. We need to do something. We stayed up late, brainstorming. By morning, I had a plan. I wasn't just going to sit back and let Barbara destroy our family. I started keeping a journal, documenting every snide comment, every backhanded compliment, date, time, exact words. I wrote it all down. Sarah, dear, are you writing a novel? Barbara asked during her next visit, eyeing my notebook. Just keeping track of some things, I replied sweetly. With Mark's agreement, I installed security cameras in our living room and kitchen. Just for security, I told Barbara when she noticed. Her pursed lips told me she wasn't buying it, but I didn't care. I also encouraged Emily to express her feelings through art. One day I found her drawing a picture of a small, sad figure, surrounded by sharp, angry red lines. What's this, sweetie? I asked gently. Emily hesitated. It's... it's how I felt when Grandma yelled at me. My heart clenched, but I knew these drawings could be powerful evidence later. A few weeks in, I decided to confide in Mark's sister, Lisa. We met for coffee, and I spilled everything. Oh, Sarah, Lisa sighed. I wish I could say I'm surprised. Mom's been like this for years. What do you mean? Lisa's eyes welled up. She... she's always been critical, but it got worse after Dad died. Nothing I do is ever good enough. I thought I was alone in dealing with this. I reached across the table, squeezing her hand. You're not alone anymore. We need to put a stop to this, Lisa. For Emily. For you. For all of us. We spent hours talking, sharing stories, and formulating a plan. By the time we left the cafe, we had a solid strategy to expose Barbara's behavior to the entire family. Are you sure about this? Lisa asked as we parted. I nodded firmly. It's time Barbara faced the consequences of her actions. We're not just protecting Emily. We're standing up for ourselves, too. That night, I filled Mark in on the plan. He looked worried but determined. I hate that it's come to this, he said. But you're right. Mom needs to understand she can't treat people this way, especially her own family. As I lay in bed that night, my mind raced with all we had to do. Gather evidence, talk to other family members, prepare for the confrontation. It was daunting, but when I thought of Emily's sad eyes and Lisa's tears, I knew it was necessary. Sarah? Mark murmured sleepily beside me. Yeah? Thank you. For standing up for our family, for not giving up. I smiled in the darkness. Always. We're in this together. As I drifted off to sleep, I felt a glimmer of hope. Barbara's reign of emotional terror was coming to an end. We were going to reclaim our happiness our confidence, our family, and nothing, not even Barbara, could stop us now. Three months of meticulous planning led to this moment. I took a deep breath, surveying our living room filled with family members. Barbara sat in the center, oblivious to what was coming. Thank you all for coming, I began, my voice steadier than I felt. 
we're here to address some concerns. I clicked the remote, and the slideshow began. Barbara's eyes widened as her own voice filled the room, criticizing Emily's cooking. What is this? she demanded. This Barbara is the truth, I replied, advancing to a clip of her berating Lisa. As the evidence mounted, video clips, audio recordings, Emily's heartbreaking drawings, Barbara's face cycled through shock, anger, and disbelief. You've all been spying on me? She sputtered. Mark stood up. No, Mom. We've been protecting ourselves. One by one, family members shared their experiences. Lisa spoke of years of criticism. Mark's cousin Tom recounted Barbara's hurtful comments at his wedding. Barbara, Mark said firmly, this has to stop. You need help. Help? I don't need help. You're all overreacting to a bit of constructive criticism. I couldn't hold back anymore. Constructive? You crushed a ten-year-old's spirit. Emily hasn't cooked since that dinner. You've hurt everyone in this room with your criticism. Barbara looked around, seemingly realizing for the first time that she was alone in her stance. Her lower lip trembled. I... I never meant to. Intent doesn't erase impact, I said. We've made a decision as a family. You need to seek professional help, or we'll have to limit contact, including with Emily. You can't keep my granddaughter from me, Barbara shouted. Mark stepped in. We can, and we will if we have to. Mom, please. We're not doing this to punish you. We want to help you, but you need to want it too. The room fell silent. Barbara looked from face to face, perhaps truly seeing the pain she'd caused for the first time. I... I don't know how to change, she whispered. Lisa reached out, touching her mother's hand. That's what therapy is for, Mom. We'll support you, but you have to do the work. Tears streamed down Barbara's face. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I steeled myself. Barbara, I appreciate that, but sorry isn't enough. You've caused deep, lasting damage. It will take time and effort to heal. Barbara nodded slowly. I understand. I... I'll get help, I promise. As the family meeting wound down, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. It wasn't over. Far from it. But it was a start. Later that night, as Mark and I got ready for bed, he pulled me into a hug. You were amazing today, Sarah. Thank you for fighting for our family. I leaned into him, exhausted, but proud. We did it together. All of us. The next morning, I found Emily in the kitchen, tentatively flipping through her old cookbook. Hey, sweetie. What you doing? She looked up, a small smile on her face. I was thinking, maybe we could make pancakes? My heart soared. That sounds perfect. As we mixed batter and heated the griddle, I knew we had a long road ahead. Barbara would need time in therapy, and we'd maintain limited, supervised contact for now. But watching Emily pour her first pancake, her confidence slowly returning, I knew we'd made the right choice. Standing up to toxic behavior isn't easy, but protecting our loved ones, especially our children, is always worth the fight. And as I helped Emily flip her slightly lopsided pancake, I silently vowed to always be her safe haven, her fierce protector, and her biggest cheerleader. After all, that's what being a mother is all about. The story has come to an end. Now I have a question for you. If you were in Sarah's position, would you have given Barbara another chance after her breakdown? Or would you have maintained firm boundaries regardless of her promise to change? This situation isn't black and white. On one hand, Barbara's behavior caused significant harm, especially to young Emily. On the other, she's family and showed remorse. Where do you draw the line between forgiveness and self-protection? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your experiences and opinions could help others facing similar challenges. If you found this story engaging, please hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow. And if you want to hear more real-life drama and family sagas, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Vivid Tale.